Okay, so this is the wash and cure station. So I've shown you a little bit of um, how to use the wash station. And this is it a little bit more in detail, just a quick sort of showing you how I go about it. So you turn it on, makes that beep sound, automatically resets to wash, quick, two minutes, and on pause. A couple of things you need to know. Uh, which is difficult to show you when it was in the process. Behind here, like literally here, my, my finger is touching it, so it's about that on the back of this, there is some sort of button. I'm yet to actually actually see it and know what type of button it is, but there's something there that tends to pop out. I think it's a failsafe, so when I don't always pause it, sometimes I just lift the lid off halfway through, it automatically shuts off. And then when you put it back over, you press play and it will go beep, 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 and it won't work. So if you run into that, you just need to push this little piece of black, like a little piece of black, I don't know, switch, I suppose. It's not really a switch. It's like a, it's like a button that sticks out and you push it back in. It's quite stiff. It's not like a, it's difficult to explain. It's like a, uh, like a peg that's pushed out rather than a switch. It's that kind of feeling. You push that in, it will work. So what you get with this, you get two parts to it. You get like a Tupperware box, which we showed uh, previously, which has uh, the washing aspect. And then you get this. This is a metal plate, so it's both. they're both magnetized. And if you watch here, I'll let go. And it clips in, so it finds its way. This is the curing station. So this is really sort of a roundup, just showing you a few things that I instantly got wrong, so you don't do that. You will press play to cure stuff with it on wash, and it will go too fast and everything will fly off. I will show you an example of that. I have a figure here I want to cure. So I'm gonna put that on. We then cover it with the UV protective cover and then we press cure, so it's on quick, and that happens. You go, oh, goodness, that's because you've got it on wash. That will happen, just bear in mind, it's one of those things to check. I've got post-it notes all over the place for me to remind me of what I'm meant to be doing. So always check before you press play, change the mode, mode to cure, change the speed to normal. It's not really necessary to have a quick cure for models for figures maybe because where they've got like um so if you've got a bow sticking up and the resin's a bit brittle if you want to cure it fast uh, it will be a bit bendier it won't be it won't be so brittle so there's an example but with scale models generally you want to cure it properly and solidly so uh, having it on normal is good for that i'll set it to two minutes and we'll press play and there we are the lights come on at the back the plate spins around nice and evenly. It's a bit bit stuttery as it starts, but as you can see now, it's it's smooth enough for as far as the model spinning on the plate. And the UV light is now curing and setting the resin. As we can see in there, we've got a chap in his support. I'm going to do a separate video on supports, the pros and cons. From what I've learned is to curing with the supports, curing without the supports, and in fact I'll use this one as an example, we'll use this figure. So I'm going to cure this one for two minutes, that's cured supports. We'll then show you in the video with one that is not cured, here, and show you what um, the difference is for getting supports off. So we'll get into that in a different video. There's uh, now just another point to pick up on the 3D printer. So now I just want to run through just a couple of things and again another quick five minute sort of overview of the actual layout of the printer, not the usability. And there we go, the cure station is just finished, so that model has been cured. Now this is my first uh, 3D printer, so I haven't got anything to compare it with as far as what other printers do compared to this one. Uh, my experience is I've never printed anything in 3D printing. And in the last three weeks since I've had this, I've done an awful lot of 3D printing. And I'm now at a point where any issues I've had with the help of some friends who have been very helpful in, in giving me advice and logically thinking through steps, 
I am now capable of printing files that I can download from the internet without issue. I'm getting a 100% uh, success rate at the minute with my resin that I've dialed in, with the calibration test that we talked about earlier, and with the few points that I'm going to show you now. So we'll get straight into the things I found as far as this printer that make it work, and then we'll come back to an overview of how the printer works. First off, leveling the build plate. We've shown you leveling the build plate, and I did level the build plate correctly, and I had it on the correct setting, uh, sorry, the correct way on here, how it actually physically screws on. We did a build of some figures, which came out perfectly, I thought, brilliant. Right, so I didn't film the figures, I filmed us with nine warriors, it was running across there, printed the nine warriors, they came out fine, everything was great, I got them off, I thought, okay, let's run a scale model. I ran a scale model of a 176 biplane, 70 second, sorry, biplane, put the build plate back on, and that's when I made my first mistake. So, I took off the build plate like this. There is a screw at the front, and there is a screw hole in the top, presumably to attach something. I took this off, I scraped off the warriors, I went like this, turned it back around, and put it on and screwed it up. It looks just like it did before, I had no idea that there was a difference. I then printed the 172nd biplane and it failed and that's what you saw. That's what that I then went through the process of washing and clearing up. The reason it failed is because I leveled the build plate in one direction, which is correct, and it also catches. I've also noticed I was going to put this, I was going to put this down as a complaint that when this is dripping in resin, you pull it a little bit, and then it catches, and you go like that, and all the resin drips off. That's because you're putting it on backwards. This screw needs to face out. It's this screw that's catching. It's this screw facing out, which this build plate is leveled to that. As long as I put it on like that, it doesn't catch, it is level, it doesn't fail, the prints work, everything works every single time. I have now put a post-it note on saying screws out and check the tightness. So as long as you've got the build plate fixed with the screws out and this is tightened up, once you've dialed in your resin with your calibration tests, it should print every single time. I also have the habit of after cleaning I clean this, wipe it down, and I just put it back on there while I'm sorting something else. I haven't screwed it in. I then press print, it goes in and prints, and then all of a sudden it's doing this. And I go, oh, I haven't tightened it up. You have to get it right. If that happens, just cancel the print, clear the bed again by using the clean function, and start again. There is no point waiting the two, three, four hours for the print, hoping it'll be okay, because it will never be okay if you don't get the base layers right. So. My post-it note says, screws out, check tightness. You clean, screws out, tighten down, enough resin in the vat, that's on, that's on, shut the top, you can print. And now a brief overview of some of the aspects of the printer. So this is what I really like, this top opening box, so end opening, side opening, front opening. <laughs> A box that is attached and opened. Nearly all of the ones I've seen that are around are like this and you have to take this off and then find a, a place that doesn't exist for you to put it to then put it back on. This you just lift up. Excellent. The built-in uh, in feed and out feed for the resin. Excellent. There's a tube on the back that clips up. I do have a feeling long term that clip's going to break, but you can still just tie it up. It's not a problem. You tape it up, whatever. Leave the bottle there. Um, that's good. I've uh, seen some where they actually get a lid with it built into the lid to make it more secure. Uh, this is just a pipe that goes straight in, so you have to think of that. Um, built in carbon filter. Excellent. With a drawer and a, and a pipe. You can sort of see the pipe, not really, there's a pipe here. Screw into the back, out the window, just like your bench vent or anything like that for when you're spraying models. Excellent, takes all the fumes out of the room. It comes with a spare FET sheet, which is the sheet in the bottom of the vat here, so that's good. Uh, that's gonna have to be replaced at some point. As far as anything else, I mean, it really boils down to just 
your personal um, taste really there is scrolling text on the screen which is what I've seen most of the issue is I mean I didn't have a problem with it at all I did, didn't even give it a second thought but because people had mentioned it you, you, it was easy to think okay yes maybe the scrolling text wasn't brilliant but it's absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned um, the features that are built in are all absolutely fine there's plenty of options there for changing a the settings in a print you can also do that in your um, slicing software and we will get onto that in another video as part of this series so all in all i'm perfectly happy with this i think it's great i think it matches up to any other uh, printer in its range it is 8k there is technicalities to how much pixelation you actually get based on the size of the LCD screen, but that's far too involved for me to understand. Uh, basically, it's an 8K printer with quite a large build plate, so it's pretty good in my book. I haven't had any issues with it that aren't fixable and solely relating to calibrating the resin or leveling the build plate. Once all that's done, every print I've done has been absolutely fantastic. One thing I will say is exposure times I'm often seeing up near sort of 1.6, 1.6 seconds, something like that. And I found with my calibration tests, I needed to be down to 0 0.9 second. So take of that what you will. For my resin, which is Anycubic Water Washable Resin Plus, that is what was working for me. I wasn't getting it overexposed. Um, one last note is to say that Creality did send their resin through which I was using, and I've got Creality Fast Resin UV Curable 1000 grams grey. Kind of strange, it's a liquid, it's always measured in weight, so grams, but there we are. Um, I've got another unopened version of it. Now, it actually took me a bit of learning, because on the side it's got all the different ones. Elastic resin, water washable resin, dental mode resin. It's what's written on the box, is what you get. Simply because I'm not outside and I can't get outside, I'm not in a garage and I just walk straight outside and pour the water onto the, you know, down the drain or something. It's actually a little bit of an issue for me to take the water out and change it. I'm doing it at my work because we live in a flat. Um, I switch to water washable resin and I don't use IPA, I just use water. I use, um, like we've seen, I use a, a sort of washing bucket to get off most of the resin and then I put it into the washer and put it into uh, here and that works for me um, I, so I need the water washable aspect so that's why I'm not using the resin that they sent with me because that needs to be cleaned with um, uh, methylated spirits or IPA and just at the minute that doesn't work for me if I had a garage it wouldn't be a problem. I am going to use it up to print some figures once I'm ready to sort of change over. Uh, but I haven't done that yet. Um, and where I'm printing sort of scale modelling stuff. The finesse that I'm getting out of the Anycubic Water Washable Resin Plus. That's working for me. You can change your resin. I could pour that resin in with another resin. Use it all together because it's all thinned by isopropyl alcohol. It's not really that much of a problem. But when you're starting out for ease... If chemicals is something you don't want to get into, water washable resin is something to look at. Uh, one last thing as well, I've got some tools here. So what I've gone and bought, you get a uh, sort of scraper. This is perfectly fine. That scraper is great. The plastic scraper is great as well. Plastic scraper is for anything relating to the vat, so you don't dig in and break the vat. And if you break the vat, the resin's going everywhere. So you do not want to be doing that. That's the FEP sheet, the FEP sheet inside there. There is a film sheet. Don't break it. Don't be heavy with it. Don't try and get stuff off. Use the cleaning function and work it that way. I've got some tongs, metal tongs, so I can get into the bucket when I'm washing. That's about it. I've got a kind of screwdriver there to undo the clip at the back when it's sticking a little bit. Um, all perfectly normal stuff. Um, I need a jug and a sieve and a tray, plastic tray. So I went out and bought those. You will get through more kitchen roll than you could ever possibly imagine. So that's something just to bear in mind as well. You do need a lot of kitchen roll tissue that sort of stuff for cleaning and chucking away there is quite a lot of waste on that aspect other than that it's been quite simple i got some silicon mats off of um, 
Amazon. I'm going to upgrade these to an IKEA. The IKEA do like a welly tray that you put next to your door. That's going to be perfect. It'll fit both of these on it and get rid of all this nonsense where it's all uneven. Um, but silicon mats are good because when resin dries, you just go like that and it'll peel off. So that's fine. Um, oh, and yes, wear gloves. Don't mess about. Don't try and reuse them. Just use them and chuck them away. Other than that, you're good to go and start printing. Get your files, load them in, fill up with resin and press print.